Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. I recently purchased an assortment of yarn from Knit Picks. Today's project is to make a warp out of Swish fingering weight wool. It's 437 yards on a skein. And this is a 100% fine superwash merino wool. So it feels lovely. And it should dye nicely uh, without sticking to itself uh, in the dye pot. So that's the reason why I've chosen a superwash. I've taken one skein of Swish and I've used my ball winder here to create this ball. And I'm going to wind this into a warp. I'm going to use the whole thing uh, to make a three yard long warp and we'll see how many ends we get. It should be um, 110 ends, I guess. So that's a good uh, good size to to set at. I'm guessing it's a it'll work well in the 12 and a half um, end per inch heddle or reed. Um, can be used on any kind of loom. So that's the next thing to do is to wind this into a warp. I'm winding it into a warp now. I've got my ball of the superwash sitting on the floor by my feet and I'm winding a three yard warp. I'm basically checking to see how many ends I get out of a complete skein of the swish. It makes sense to use one skein for one warp, I think. So I have um, calculated it should be about 145 ends. 145 ends is a good size. Uh, if this is going to be woven at 12 or 12 and a half ends per inch, or maybe even um, 15, that gives a good width of, you know, 11, 12. inches wide. So my warping board is attached to the wall and I just go back and forth. I have a cross happening. I have a cross happening right here and this is where I count and see how many ends I've got. I'll tie the cross so that preserves the order of the threads. So I'm just going to keep going like this until the entire ball of yarn is wound into this warp. So I got to the end of the ball and just tied it on here on the first peg. Just going to see how many ends I have. So I have 144 ends, which is pretty much what I guessed. I guessed 145, didn't I? So that's great. Remember, I'm now tying my cross. First thing I do, so I don't lose it, I tie it in a cotton thread so also it doesn't die, so it's easy to find it. Afterwards, it stays more or less white. And then I tie each end tightly too in a choke tie, one here, one here. So I just sort of follow the peg inside my two ends where that are tied. And and as tight as I can get it there. So it's tied tightly at either end and a loose tie at the cross and then I like to give it a loose figure eight in two more places which will help stop the tangles in the die pot. So here's what the cross looks like. This is put 
through the cross here. So one side coming through there and one through there. Let's get this counting thread out of the way. The ends are tied tightly like that. And the middle has a tie like this in two places. So once every yard. So there's the beginning tied tightly. And we have one yard, two yards, three yards long. So now I can just slip it off the warping board. And I've switched to the reusable zip ties. I find they are easier to get on and off without getting the yarn caught in it. Gives us a nice big loop too for hanging. So now we've got a one yard long, because it's folded back over itself, warp chain, which can be put in the die pot. It's securely tied at either end and loosely in other places and it's ready to go into the pot or the pan. I haven't decided how I'm going to dye this yet. I am going to use up all the old leftover dyes. So what I have here are dyes from past projects. Most of these dyes were mixed up, oh not weeks, probably months ago. and. Some of these other little bits and bobs are even older. All colors are unknown. This one's marked as light rhodamine red, so that's probably what it is. The rest are mixtures. As I finished dye projects, I poured them into these squeeze bottles, and if I had something close to a purple, I added it to what looked like purple. Um, same with, you know, pink and blues and greens. I just kind of added it to whichever one seemed appropriate. So these are all random mixtures. I also have um, a little container of dye powder that's been mixed with uh, citric acid. Because of the high humidity both um, in Cape Breton in the summer and in this dye studio, things can get pretty steamy in here, it's hardened into a lump. So I'm gonna um, probably break that up so it, it once again is um, uh, sprinkles and the same situation here. I'm going to take a warp and see if I can add all of this to it and make it look decent. The warp is in here. It's superwash swish. I think the colors will strike quicker because of that and we're just going to see what happens. This should be interesting actually, if the yarn is going to be quite randomly laid out. So this warp will be unlike others, I don't think it's going to be striped. I'm going to add a little bit of the acidic water just um, because the pan's already hot underneath there. I don't have the heat on but it's residual from another dyeing project. So I'm just going to grab the bottles one at a time and play. And I will save the uh, dye powders with the citric acid to the end. So this is the rhodamine red which is very bright. That's all that I'm going to put on that for now anyway. And I don't know what else we have here, so let's find out. Oh, a blue. And this looks like a green coming up. I think I recognize some avocado in there. This looks like it has some turquoise. 
Yes, yes. This looks like maybe a purple. And the last one looks purple, but from its tone, I'm guessing it's a brown of some sort. So I'm going to turn on the heat so that it can help the color strike. And I'm just going to keep moving the yarn around in the pan and adding more color until there's no white showing at all. Once this heat has caused most of the color to strike, we will do some moving. It's a strange color scheme. Right now it's not looking the best because I have equal amounts of each color. So some of these colors I think I won't add any more and some of them I'll add lots more. And uh, I think that will help keep it interesting. All right, I found that moving things around cause colors to strike better than if it sits for long periods of time. So let's flip. There's lots of white. What I've decided to do is use up the turquoise and the blue I don't think I'm going to be able to use up all the colors I have here. So I think by um, now focusing on these two colors, Water level is getting higher as we go. It's been a while since I dyed a super wash, so it's um yes, it does seem to strike faster than the regular wool. Like wool that's not super wash. And moving it around helps it to sop up the color. There's actually not very many light areas left. added water to the the bottle that'll just help things blend
There's a tie here. So that probably doesn't matter a whole lot because that's going to be the end of the warp. I do want to saturate things, so let's add color to all the light areas. I think we're going to end up with still quite a variety, even though I'm Going in with the these two main colors. some pretty good coverage here. So I'll just add a bit more water to clean out this bottle. And I'm going to add some more acid water from the, uh, the soaking bin. This is different from how I do most of my warps. I do them in bands so that the colors are the same as they go across, but this is going to be a little more random, I believe. And I like it, I think. It'll dry a little lighter than what we see here, but I think this will be a fun warp. I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks. I haven't done a warp like this before, where I just randomly add colors all over. So, so I not only want to just see what it looks like once it's dyed, I also want to uh, warp it up and weave it and uh, see what a woven piece looks like with a variegated uh, yarn like this, a multicolored yarn like this. I am looking at selling ready-made warps out of my shop and I want to see if this is a good technique to try. I don't think there's going to be speckling in this one. I think the speckling will be too much. I think this is a pretty busy and fun color scheme as it is, so the speckling will be too much. So I'm going to save those uh, powders that are mixed with the citric acid for another time. For another warp and another video. Okay, the water is cold. And it does look like the The color is all in the yarn. There's some staining in the pan, but the water, I believe, is clear. So here's what the yarn looks like, which is 
fantastic. Love this. So just look at those colors, the variety and the depth. Mmm, this is beautiful. So I'll go rinse this out and hang it to dry and then we will look at it at a later time. And here is the finished work. Now the first thing I can say about the Swish yarn is the feel. This is the loftiest, softest yarn that I've dyed probably. It's, um, I guess because it's a knitting yarn rather than a, a weaving yarn, it's just, oh, lofty is the word. It, it seems light, lightweight compared to um, the equivalent amount of yarn. And I wonder if it's because it is superwash, it's not um, sticking to itself. Like um, I've been de I've been dyeing 100% um, wool not superwash a lot lately. So when it comes out of the dye bath and you know is dried, um, it's sticking slightly. Um, just from the uh, the fulling process that happens when you dye it in in the hot water, and this of course is not nothing's nothing sticking. So I there's more air in it, so maybe that's one reason why it's just sort of really light and lofty. Anyways, it feels wonderful. So um, it's going to be a pleasure to thread through the reed and weave with because it's not. Um, I don't have to worry about the the uh, fibers sticking to their neighbors. Second observation is the colors are gorgeous. Uh, this is not going to be banded like uh, quite so much as with my other warps. So the colors are not going to be in obvious, um, you know, stripes down the length. It's going to have variation even across the width of it. These are the ties to keep it all separate. I'll take those out when I... The co it's going to change colors as it goes down the length. Mm. It's going to look pretty cool when it's woven, I think. So let me just uh, chain it up and then we'll take another look. Okay, what a beautiful warp chain. Color variation in any given section is just gorgeous. So this is a 144 ends. It was three yards pre-dyeing and I will measure it up um, before I put it on the loom and see how long it is now. But uh, this is the sort of warp that I'm thinking of possibly um, putting in my shop in larger numbers so with at least this kind of fiber I don't know if this kind of dyeing method but um, you know the swish fiber so uh, I'll weave this and that way I'll have a good idea of how it works and what EPI uh, it, I can recommend and uh, then I'll mix some more, I think, to uh, stock my shop. So, mm, I can't wait to work with this yarn. A big thank you to my patrons whose support helps me to create more of these videos. Links to my Patreon as well as my website and my store are in the description below. Thank you for watching!